Hello, hello, folks. Welcome, everyone, again. Shema, Herman. Hello, don't you, Christian? Hello, Hiba Baro. Baro. Hello, hello. All right, all right. Eat, sleep, trade. Yes, 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 exactly. <laughs> So, what do we have in here uh, on our dear Nasdaq? Dear Nasdaq. All right. So apparently we swept the buy side uh, from the long session. Right. We consolidated around it, and after the 8:30 news, basically we traded lower. Sell side liquidity below the low was taken out but no further weakness was basically shown I will delete those drawings and uh, add new ones uh, soon at the same time yeah ES did pretty much very similar similar thing here all right So, so far, Mr. Nasdaq is refusing to go lower. And yeah, I don't or won't force this one to to do so. He traded back into this hourly for valley gap right before in the discount. All right, so I'm kind of like uh, thinking that buy side might be uh, the draw for Nasdaq. Obviously, that's the best case scenario, the all time high here, equal highs. That's the best case. I'm not saying it will happen today. That's a reference point that I'm personally like considering in my analysis and this hourly CB uh, is most likely where the price wants to draw at this point so let's see if that uh, will be actually the case head on for valley gap there after the opening bell so yeah definitely we have some smts on the lows low higher low low lower low on nasdaq but yeah i'm i'm kind of like i don't like to be a buyer at such a deep premium prices in here like we see right now so that's why i will take it with a great deal of assault uh, but yeah let's see Dobry day one hey arnold Hello, Finza Bowes, Johnny. Hello, hello, Khalid. Are you Italian? Kalik? No, I'm Polish. I'm Polish. I'm Polonia. Yes, 10 a.m. news also. That will uh, add to the to the market. I mean, the volatility will be added to the market. So this is the fair valley gap that was created after the news i don't know we left also like a lot of sloppy lows in here that are suspicious to some degree but at the same time we have kind of like equal highs left from here as the buy side So 
Uh, let's see how it will develop. Because yeah, the buy sell liquidity above those equal highs that were left uh, before the news, I believe is kind of like obvious at this moment. So that could be potentially the case. Uh, coupled with that CB on the hourly that may want to be rebalanced that would uh, makes that would make uh, at least some sense in my opinion uh, so yeah es is definitely lagging and ym is completely doing the opposite so nasdaq is the 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 one who may run the buy side the other two are significantly or visibly weaker at this moment or point of time so i wonder that's not like super a lot of range to be covered so i'm i'm still kind of like uh, digesting what the price may want to achieve in here So yeah, let's see. Let's see. We are deep into the range already, so I'm not considering this as a long entry because this is like the premium of this whole range, deep premium of this whole range. So that's not what I'm necessarily looking for uh, as a long entry. But yeah, I'm I'm kind of like watching still. trying to figure this out because at the same time we do have an RTH gap right from yesterday's close to today's open we gapped higher basically so this whole uh, lack of any price action uh, may want to be revisited at some time in the future uh, so that's something that I'm keeping in, in mind basically so maybe instead of this I may uh, note the RTH gap because this is how it looks uh, right now so the sell side liquidity below this low coupled with the RTH gap ain't ain't too bad I would say but yeah let's see So previously, I mean, before we, we've made this rally here, right? We had equal highs right there from the opening range, basically, right? That was the opening range low and oper opening range high. 
we took it higher above the equal highs with a fair valley gap right so this is like the line in the sand that should hold price uh, for higher prices if this fails we've taken a pool of relative equal highs here right so that wouldn't be too crazy to think uh, that we could see some measure of of selling after that we also have taken the previous day's high by the way and and yeah I still kind of like would like to see some lower prices nonetheless on the on the Nasdaq and ES I'm not necessarily a big fan of trading for new all-time highs at this moment but yeah I cannot go against against a train that is moving very fast against that uh, against anyone who's shorting but let's see because this could change into an inversion for Valga potentially um, but yeah let's see right exactly so we we lost the ground on this fair value gap as potentially anticipated because buy set was taken uh, earlier and we are losing the ground completely so that's fairly interesting I would say right so at this moment we created a CB at the other hand or at the other side basically so I wonder if this will work as an inversion for value gap it's not necessarily that it needs to but that would be interesting and that would allow for potential run below the 930 low that was created here I mean so far we are hanging around the midpoint of this whole range right we came back a little bit below the equilibrium now we are a little bit above it I, I can't really decipher very high probability direction of the next move at this particular moment 
I've, I kind of feel like it's 50 50. Uh, so, yeah, this is how I see it right now. Price made a flash lower in here, obviously, but not even close below this um, blue box. Blue rect blue rectangle here, which was the first imbalance of the after the equity opened. So this is kind of like holding the price. Plus we didn't even touch the RTH gap so far, so we are trading back into this Fervali gap. That was a busy right there. Now because we traded below it, and we are in premium, and we took equal highs. I'm anticipating this to become an inversion for Valley Gap and offer potentially lower prices, right? But yeah, as, as I said, I'm not necessarily like super convinced about either direction at this moment. So I'm, I'm really watching closely how the price is behaving around this uh, fair value gap in here because ideally I don't want to see a closure above it right and I would like to see uh, lower prices we have a lot of sell side liquidity resting below those clean uh, lows right there right so that's something to, to watch or look for, basically. It looks like a trend line phantom. But yeah, price is not necessarily saying that it will be taking it uh, right now or during this particular hour. At least so far I'm I'm getting uh, read like this. So let's see how this inversion will be worked around. And yeah, this has to offer resistance if we want to see lower prices, I think. So ES at this at the same time is doing literally nothing. It's, it's just holding the range, looking probably for a little bit higher. So yeah, that's that's why the Nasdaq uh, was not a se <coughs> a necessarily sell in here yet. That was a potential for this to work as inversion but apparently it's not being respected as nicely so i mean that's fine i i can i can live with that So I'm watching this candle as a potential bullish order block right now and these short term highs may be, may be targeted very easily at this moment.
So, yeah, let's see. But yeah, definitely I can I can see some underlying unwillingness to to trade any lower. And that's what's kind of like keeping me uh, keeping me sidelines and and watching. So the next pool of buys and liquidity that I have in my notes on the upside would be eighteen thousand six hundred twenty six even. If the price would really really put up some strength I think that's where uh, the next objective for the price would be what would or would reside but yeah let's see let's let's not uh, not push on it because I mean if it's not obvious if it's not clear or, or clean or if it's not doing what I want it to do then I have no business to be engaging uh, because otherwise I will be like purely uh, purely gambling right so yeah I was talking about this buy side liquidity pool here uh, that's like the next next uh, on the radar if the price would want to go higher which so far it's it's showing some some willingness to do so but uh, but yeah let's see right let's see So, so far nothing in here constitutes, in my opinion, a high probability, uh, short or long, uh, either way, it, it looks really like sideways, 50-50, I'm not kind of like sure about uh, the next move, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that I don't necessarily know right now where the price will want to go next. So I'm trying to decipher that uh, right now. So we had all of these discounts arrays in here that uh, were meant to support the price potentially right but they are not doing so they are not doing so at the same time they are i mean price is creating uh, another sell side imbalances cbs here and here and trading below this short term low also this is kind of overlapping with the inversion for value gap but I will add it uh, because it's important to to note that I may uh, shift this one a little bit to the left so you can see so this CB right sell side in mass bias and efficiency was a premium array as the price was below it right but after the price went above it here as we came back down to it it was a discount array I mean it was working as a discount array so if uh, the Nasdaq will want to seek higher prices the price should be respecting discount arrays so this shouldn't be broken to the downside 
and this should basically work as an inversion for valley gap in that uh, particular scenario right but yeah because i don't necessarily know what is the next draw on liquidity because it ap it didn't appear clear to me at this moment uh, i'm, I'm kind of like trying to get a better feel but yeah i can make cases for both sides i can imagine taking the buy set here and i can imagine taking the trend line trend line phantom there and sell side below the 930 so yeah we'll see Right, we traded into the SEBI with this week and we are reacting aggressively um, towards the trend line phantom sell side liquidity right below those lows and potentially the 930 sell side liquidity there so that's uh, where I'm aiming or where I'm looking right now because the price is uh, trading through this counter race and sub and like favoring or reacting out of premium arrays obviously we are inside of a cons bigger consolidation bigger range so it's it's kind of like tricky and you can't be like uh, approaching this as there, there there is a one method that works every time because there is probably nothing uh, like like that or like this uh, so we kind of have to take it minute by minute and if the potential downside will be completely um, the arguments for potential downside will be completed completely deleted then obviously you change your mind and you will look for the buy sell liquidity pools but as it is right now it opens the gate for the run on this trend line phantom here sell sell liquidity and potentially this 930 uh, low right and that's what we are seeing right now so price is stretching lower quite aggressively in here uh, to take out this pool of sales and liquidity right there and it's touching the RTH gap at the same time right uh, so let's see Yeah, Sean, you, you have to be nimble in this environment uh, after all because these these averages are moving way, way, way beyond uh, many expectations. So it is what it is, right? So I'm assuming the sales liquidity below 930 
uh, may be potentially aimed or may be drawn to, right? It's not an absolute, but that's my idea continuously, right? Why? Because I'm not forcing a reversal of this down move. I'm, I'm, I'm letting it go. And as you can see, we are stretching exactly. 9.30 was taken out, right? So it, it basically turned the corner here and traded to the sell sell liquidity. So now the question is, did I know that it will go there, right? And the answer is I kind of did and I kind of didn't, right? Because as I said, I could see at, at this point when the price was trading in here, I could see both sides. I could I could uh, make a case for the price to run the buy side and the sell side. So I needed to wait for more information, for more data to like find uh, a better probabilities behind like one or another idea, right? And at this moment, as this broke lower in here, and this Ferval gap reacted nicely, I said I'm favoring this sell sell liquidity below those lows, and ideally the 930 sell sell liquidity here, and that delivered. I was not saying here, oh, that's that's maybe a buy, that's it should go higher here. No, at this point I was looking there. If obviously price would for some reason uh, I don't know trade above this fair value gap and he, and this high potentially then yeah i would be proven wrong and that's how the trading works that's that's how the trading uh, basically is right you, you you can't be right always but you are dealing with the probabilities so nonetheless uh, Nonetheless, that's that's uh, how it how it worked so far today. So so yeah, let's see. Uh, I s I assume uh, I assume because yeah, RTH gap we have this high of the gap. We have the midpoint which is here that we already traded to, and we have the low, the complete closure, right? maybe I will go to the RTH so everyone can see so this is the gap from this candles close to this candles open that's the gap we traded to the uh, to the high of it midpoint and yeah a little bit below the midpoint so we, we still have this portion left unfilled and I would be expecting potentially to see a 75% of this range to be closed or completely uh, closure this range, right? But I wouldn't force that at this moment, right? So already that's that's not a moment where I would anticipate new shorts, new 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 selling here um, because we already like dipped into some discount of this RTH gap and we took sell sell liquidity below the 930 Admittedly, it can deliver lower still, but that's not necessarily uh, high probability as it is right now, in my opinion, or in my in my uh, point of view of the of the market. So,
All right, all right, all right, all right. So a, a framework, a trade framework, a potential framework delivered to the sales side right now. Will it continue? I don't know. It may or it may not, right? I, I would need more data, more price action uh, to support the idea of continuation or con consolidation or uh, retracement, right? So obviously the the first like first uh, thoughts are pointing to potential 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 continuation, right? So I'm not forcing a reversal. I'm I'm giving giving it room to continuously trade lower to completely close this RTH gap, and that would be my uh, objective on the downside, basically. But as it was taking sell sell liquidity, as it was going to the midpoint of the RTH gap, these were uh, or these are certain discount arrays that uh, may offer an area to scale uh, scale out and take some off uh, at logical levels. So that's that's at least how I see it from this perspective in here because I'm trading the intra intra session volatility intra session liquidity and yeah this is how it looks like uh, so far so the sell side was taken the midpoint was approached and price is retracing back uh, into the range right so this is the low we are already poking above it uh, what imbalance do we have uh, inside the range or closest to the price? This CB. So I would anticipate this CB to be traded too uh, at this point, right? That doesn't mean it will definitely trade there, but I'm I'm anticipating that. Right, so I'm I'm watching this last down close candle in here. Uh, if the price will want to trade above it, like it does uh, right now, because then this will potentially potentially allow this last down close candle in here to work as a potential bullish order block. I'm not saying this is for sure. Uh, bullish order block but this is an area at a discount where a bullish order flock is more likely to form so yeah by, by the way the the uh, the way we, we are trading into the CB is also quite aggressive so far so it's showing uh, a lot of strength to me but yeah, let's see. I'm, I'm not forcing this to be a low. It could still go lower, but I'm, I'm drawing out both sides of the PDRA spectrum, right? To get a better idea of where the market is really going to, right? Because if it's going lower continuously, it will disrespect this bullish order block very quickly and it will respect this CB very nicely and that's that's what I'm I'm kind of like studying right so we traded into it into this CB but we closed exactly at the discount low of this uh, imbalance 
So this is potentially good for lower prices, right? But at the same time, we have a bullish order block right there. This last down close candle here. And uh, to disregard this, we would need to trade below it, close below the mean threshold, right? That would uh, basically cancel the idea of this being bullish order block in this particular moment. And that's what I want to see. I want to see this being disrespected. I'm noting a short term pool of sales and liquidity. Yeah, at the same time, ES is not doing too much as I can see right now. So, on five minutes, we are in a very strict small range, aka consolidation. So, not much to say about this one, I, I think. YM is pushing a little bit higher at this at the same time and yeah e, uh, nasdaq i suppose or i anticipate potentially still lower but yeah let's see so we traded once again into the cb and we are reacting out of it right trading back into what this last uh, up close candle which is what bullish order block theoretically right but uh, because the trend in here t was basically bearish right it was moving lower we retraced into the imbalance into the cb i don't want to see reaction out of this bullish order block here because if price would react here that would basically be an early sign of a potential retra uh, deep retracement or outright reversal right so i want this candle to be completely disregarded and traded through and uh, aimed for the short term sell side liquidity below the 1031. So price did not close below the mean threshold yet, but admittedly it traded very aggressively into this down close candle, which is violating its basically strongest points, which is the open. So as 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 we can see, the order flow is still bearish in here because I because ev everything what I outlined uh uh a while ago so i assume the short term sell sell liquidity will be taken out uh, or or should be taken out in my opinion in no time at this at this uh at this moment so let's see Price also created a small fair valley gap there at the same time. So we are retracing into it at this moment. So at the same time, ES is holding inside of the small range and YM is doing completely opposite, rallying uh, higher and higher and higher, right? So there is some lack of uh, symmetry in the, in the index futures in here, which 
may be may be uh, problematic right for the clear read on the price and that's why you have to be very nimble in here because if it won't take out the cell set here for example and if it would break through uh, this fair value gap in here this inversion order block and this CB for example it would take out this high that would be meaningful uh, in my opinion uh, and that would cancel the super high probability of the continuation lower as it is right now so we traded up into this fair value gap here right consecutive encroachment perfectly touched and price is reacting lower where we have uh, liquidity on the downside obvious equal lows be below the 1031 and 1042 that's obvious the sell side is there and it's very close uh, and easy for the price to take it out uh, only only if the price will want to take it out so i'm assuming that uh, that's the level or the lower lowest resistance for the price to continuously go with with the underlying direction which at this point is lower but uh, at the same time i'm keeping in mind that the markets are a little bit out of sync and that might end we are in some sort of a discount because we've taken sell side already below the 930 and if we take equal lows like this out that will be also a pool of sales and liquidity so at even deeper discount right so be be careful about about that uh, and yeah but right now the the market is emo going into some sideways move into some consolidation after the the main pool of sales and liquidity was taken out and that's fine that's fair if we will get a continuation that's great but if you want have a continuation you have to also be prepared for that because we are already at some uh, discounted levels in terms of this whole range uh, in here right so that's that's what i want to communicate plus we left equal highs by sell liquidity here and here and we have that higher uh, cb hourly cb as a potential draw so if they indeed want to go higher around here or below the sell side there would be a very juicy uh, price or ideas or like discounted prices to buy and sell high these are like ideas scenarios anticipations that are going through my mind but yeah that's that's how uh, i internalize the the market uh, day by day in here so it is what it is yeah ym is always <laughs> doing on, on its own uh, something else than the other ones but yeah so apparently after we traded here into this fair value gap consecutive encroachment and we started to trade lower we could easily have taken out the, the sell set here but for a reason we did not so either we'll get a reclaimed fair value gap in here and do it eventually or we will see a deeper retracement higher which if we are short from anywhere in here we don't want to suffer that usually so that's also a, a thing to uh, to consider so let's see so basically i favor move lower until i'm proven otherwise and when i would be proven otherwise i think uh, trading outside of the cb would be uh, an area that I would consider myself potentially wrong on, on a continuation lower, right? But until that happens, I favor downside.
So we still have the 75% of that RTH gap to be reached uh, before the complete closure. So I will add that level right now. So I'm adding the midpoint of this lower lower half. All right, so that's the RTH seventy five percent. And the the low of this orange rectangle would be the complete closure of the RTH gap at the same time. So these are the two levels on the downside I'm I'm kind of like watching for. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it will deliver, right? Because so far, after this initial sell side was taken out, price is consolidating. So let's take a look on the ES, but ES is really not doing anything halt. During the last hour or so we did like trade lower, I mean higher a little bit and lower a little bit, but not uh, not even trade outside of this range that we were dealing in before the 10 a.m. So not much was happening in here. And the fact that ES is not like trading lower by any means uh, is also like concerning or should be concerning uh, for the action on the Nasdaq, right? Because they are not moving uh, in a great symmetry. At the same time, YM is completely trading higher, right? So basically every single index future futures is doing uh, something different ym higher nasdaq lower es complete consolidation so this is a clear lack of symmetry in in the between the uh, main averages right and that's usually uh, an environment when I, I i have to be more nimble and i have to trust I mean, I, I put like less, I'm, I'm less trustworthy to the price action that I see on a single index, right? Because everyone, every single one is doing something different. So how can I trust that if Nasdaq is showing me some ideas for lower, that it will go lower when the other two are doing something completely different, right? So that's not the hallmark of high probability. So I, I, c I think I cannot explain it any plainer than, than this. But yeah, nonetheless, nonetheless, it is what it is. So uh, Nasdaq refused to trade lower. It tried to do so a few times, but uh, every single time failed. So they are engineering the sales of liquidity in here on purpose. So either either they will want to take out uh, a deeper retracement first and still continue lower that's one option 
second option they will leave the cell site here for uh, some future time like the pm session for example and before that they will run towards buy side liquidity that's also an option or we will consolidate uh, inside of this range low to high for who knows how long right because that's uh, these are the three main scenarios that i see right now and and yeah it is what it is right so the premium array that was previously seen two times here as premium right as i said as resistance and here as resistance right now we traded above it and it worked out as a support and price is trading away from it because we are very close to uh, another or main inefficiency for this uh, price run basically so far this CB offered resistance once here price traded lower but failed to take out the sell side we are reclaiming this uh, CB for the second time so I still assume there is quite some li uh, likelihood to trade below the equal lows there uh, because mm, we did not or didn't trade it uh, below them below this low so far and it's like too clean to not take it out I think but yeah who knows let's see how it will deliver uh, because so far we are arranging in, in into this inside of this consolidation but price traded into a premium array the CB and bodies are still respecting the discount law of that I like that I like to see that and at this point I don't want to see support out of this for value gap this should not offer any support right and the down close candle in here two, cons two consecutive down close candles I want to trade quickly through it right I don't want to see this uh, act as a bullish order block if it's going lower but because because uh, every index is doing something else I, I can't have a very very uh, one-sided analysis in the in the Nasdaq in here so I don't know after this run from here to the sell side here and the midpoint of that RTH gap I think right now the consolidation consolidation will build uh, like another pool of sentiment and they will run either way I mean I think at this point it could go either way it could continue higher and it could continue lower and now is now basically it's like whatever the, the Nasdaq will choose But yeah, the same fact that they uh, denied the sell side a few times in here uh, is suspicious, to say the least. So at the same time we have created equal highs by sell liquidity on on this side right uh, as we had equal lows on the sell side we have equal highs on the buy side right there and after the equal highs were taken in here right now 
if it really wants to continue lower i think that's a very good uh, time and price parameter met inside of a premium array of this inefficiency uh, to run it lower eventually i'm not saying it will do it for sure but i would anticipate a possibility of that happening because buy side taken first and sell side left untouched if they have any intentions to continue lower that would make sense to me so i don't know it may rip through and con and like trade higher that's pos that's possible because ym is continuously trading higher and nasdaq may may want to uh catch up wi with that es is consolidating uh, it could easily start trading higher also so that's that's the trickiness of this environment So I think I will wait uh, like another five minutes to digest that because if it's good uh, on, on the continuation lower, it should be continuing lower in the next couple of minutes, literally. If it's not good, then it will be proven otherwise also. So that's that's what I want to see and then I'm probably going offline so let's let's see what it will do Right, so far it's not necessarily leaving this CB as I would like to, to see. I don't want to see the CB uh, support price and the discount low is supporting price at least uh, so far. So this is a little bit concerning. But yeah, let's, let's see. Also we created a swing high in here, uh, which I would like to not trade uh, above it and leave this as a potential turtle soup equal highs taken turtle soup and pair it uh, with the sell side liquidity there that would be my main idea if that's not the case then i would probably uh, like go sidelines because it, it may go really choppy very quickly so right so the buy side was swept right what well, buy side was swept here the sell side is obviously residing right there so if, if it really wants to continue lower that should be no no like uh question for the price where to go it's obviously or it should obviously be drawn uh, down here i'm not necessarily sure if it if it uh, really wants to go there yet because uh, of the decoupling on the indices but that's what I would favor as it is right now if that fails and it trades higher I'm fine with it and I will move on um, with with something else later at a later time but at this point of time or at this moment that's what I think right so let me elongate this 
this line here so this lows should draw price uh, on the on the downside right and i don't think it will uh, necessarily or it, it does not look super super loaded uh, as it is right now i mean i don't know if if it will then great but i don't think uh, it's looking as it will go there uh, right now because it should already be closing below this fair value gap and not respecting this uh, as inversion level so that's why i think this short term high might be uh, swept might be taken out but yeah that's something to to study and uh, and yeah we'll see so far consolidation and not not much is going on so i'm not elongating this this uh, sweet stream and i will be going uh, offline as it is right now so thank you everyone uh, for watching for tuning in uh, i saw a lot of people uh, joining today uh, really appreciate it so I, I wish you guys a pleasant reminder of this afternoon and see you guys uh, see you guys uh, tomorrow london and maybe the pm session today we'll see how i will manage uh, the my schedule but yeah I, I will schedule the PM session if it will be if, if it will be there. So thank you guys and see you uh, see you later or tomorrow at latest. So bye bye.